Um, what audio program are you using? Uh, today, it's Pro Tools. <laughs> Posers. <laughs> Hi, my name is Peter Tork. That's my stage name, anyway. It's really Torkelson. Actually, it's really Torkelsteinovichowitzki, but the parents changed it when they came over. Um, so I shortened it to Tork for a stage name because if you've only got this much space, Torque is this big, but Torkel Steinovich Witzke is like only this tall. So, anyway, I'm here at Wolfgang's Vault, or Wolfgang's Fault. It's Wolfgang's Fault that I'm here. Um, and um, I'm going to do a song, uh, an authentic 1950s Chicago blues that I wrote last year. You paying attention? These are the jokes. Yeah. <laughs> your fault, babe. Go ahead and do what you gotta do. No, it ain't your fault, babe. That you don't love me like I love you. It ain't your fault, baby, that I'm so blue. Well, I know you don't want to hurt me And you say it's a crying shame But you didn't do anything wrong, my baby And nobody's to blame No, it ain't your fault, baby That you don't love me like I love you It ain't your fault, baby That I'm so blue No, 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 you don't like it much You'd even take it on yourself But you don't do anyone any good Putting your own life on the shelf No, it ain't your fault, baby That you don't love me like I love you It ain't your fault, baby That I'm so blue No, it ain't your fault, baby Go ahead and do what you gotta do No, it ain't your fault, babe That you don't love me Like I love you It ain't your fault, baby That I'm so blue I'm so blue that I'm so blue I'm so blue Thank you. I thought we were pretending there was nobody here. <laughs> we blew that. Yeah. <laughs> Sky high. This is a song that you you might know if you're if you're about as old as, probably as old as your grandmother, really. But uh, this is an old song. I'm going to do it a little bit different. I was thinking about this earlier. So. Well, I thought love was only true in the fairy tale. Meant for someone else, but not for me. Love was out to get me. That's the way it seemed Disappointment haunted all my dreams Then I saw her face Now I'm a believer Not a trace Of doubt in my mind I'm in love I'm a believer I couldn't leave her if I tried well, I thought love was more or less a given thing 
Seems the more I gave, the less I got What's the use in trying? All you get is pain When I needed sunshine, I got rain Then I saw her face Now I'm a believer Not a trace Down in my mind I'm in love I'm a believer I couldn't leave her if I tried out to get me That's the way it seemed Disappointment haunted all my dreams Then I saw her face Now I'm a believer Not a trace Of doubt in my mind I'm in the love I'm a believer I couldn't leave her if I tried Oh ow ow Yeah it's the old songs that get him every time I um I heard this song, I don't know who pointed it out to me, uh, the Mills Brothers did it. It's, and you can tell when you hear the lyrics, it's, it's a World War II song. It harked back to a time when the American forces thought that what they were fighting for was you know, freedom and for all. Um, now American forces are basically fighting not to get swamped, and I don't know if anybody knows what the exact mission of the American forces overseas is, or missions are. But this was back to a simpler, happier time. Um, and, uh, after World War II came uh, suburbs, houses, a thriving middle class, a strong union movement. <sighs> so I'm going to do this to remind me of those days in hopes that it cheers me up. It's called um, Till Then, which will come as no surprise when you hear the lyric, which is just full of that line. Till then, my darling, please wait for me Till then, no matter when it will be Till then, when I can hold you again Please wait till then Our dreams will live though we are apart Our love I know we'll keep in our heart Till then When all the world will be free Please wait for me I know there are oceans we must cross And mountains we must climb I know every gain must have its loss so pray that our loss is nothing but time Till then we'll call on each memory Till then no matter when it will be Till then when I can hold you again Please wait till then I know Oceans we must cross And mountains We must climb I know Every gain must have its loss So pray that our loss Is nothing but time Till then We'll call on each memory Till then No matter when it will be Till then, when I can hold you again, 
please wait till then. Please wait till then. Here's a song that I want some of you women to pay attention to. The trouble is, you don't all know who you are, but that's okay. You've been hanging around You've been acting shy You've been talking profound been batting your eye But if you want to set my achy soul free Dress sexy for me Sexy Dress sexy for me You look so rough and tough When you wear that sexy stuff Tight sweaters and skirts can't get enough Cut real low So I can see Dress sexy for me Sexy Dress sexy for me, baby Sexy Show me some leg Make me beg Show me some thigh Make me cry Show me some lace Ain't no disgrace Come a little closer, baby, right up in my face Dress sexy for me Sexy Dress sexy for me, baby Show me some leg Make me beg Show me some thigh Make me cry Show me some lace Ain't no disgrace Come a little closer, baby, right up in my face Dress sexy for me Dress sexy for me, baby. Please, baby, just sexy. Dress sexy for me, baby. You know how I love that stuff when you do it. Oh, baby. I'm Angie with Crawdaddy Magazine, and I'm here with Peter Twerk of Monkeys, um, who stopped by the vault this afternoon, and you just played a few songs for us, which was really, really great. So thanks so much for sticking around for an interview. My pleasure, I think. We'll find out by the end of this <laughs> yeah. thing. And, you know, it could turn bad on us in a moment. I'm, I'm really mean, so. Cool. Um, yeah. So, I mean. I like that in, in a <laughs> yeah. Crawdaddy editor. Um, I think most people associate you with your work with the monkeys, but I'm kind of would like to start talking about your time in Greenwich Village, and mm -hmm. you were definitely part of that whole mm -hmm. movement and scene. Yeah. Can you kind of talk a little bit about that time of your life? Sure, kind of. Uh, let's see, I got to the village. Uh, I was just about to turn, well, let's see, it was in 1963, so I was about to turn four. Um, <laughs> Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, okay. Right, right. Um, lived there for two and a half years. Dylan had just left, uh, but uh, I got to know um, Roger McGuinn of the Birds, then Jim, um, uh, Richie Havens, uh, Jose Feliciano, um, Steve Stills. Steve was the kid who looked like me. They, these people came, there's this new kid on the street, he looks just like you. About two days later, ah, you're the kid that looks like me. He said, you're the kid I'm supposed to look like. And we laughed and shook hands. 
and we've been friends ever since. Um, um, and uh, gosh, uh, the the uh, Love and Spoonful folk were there, and Johnny Sebastian was just uh, getting that together. Um, and uh, some of the guys who were in the Mamas and the Papas were hanging around, Danny Doherty in particular. And um, Maria D'Amato, um, later uh, Maria Moldor, oh. fabulous singer, fiddle player. She was in this great little, two girls playing fiddle and singing together. It was the most wonderful thing, just transporting. Um, and, uh, and like that, you know, and I learned my craft and told bad jokes and passed the basket and um, had a just totally happy life. Nothing going on except passing the basket and telling bad jokes and buying pizza and having a stein of beer with the proceeds and just paying the rent, just barely eating, not going anywhere, who cares? I had a guitar and a banjo and life was rich. Do you think there was a sense of rivalry then or was it camaraderie among the oh, musicians? Almost, almost entirely camaraderie. Yeah. Uh, no two people were doing the same thing and there was no sense of, of somebody, you know, uh, I mean, I had not the slightest sense from anybody about jealousy or envy about anybody else. Mm -hmm. I never saw a trace of it, you know, just cheering each other on for all we were worth. What a great yeah, thing to be a part of. Good oh, yeah, work. it was just wonderful. You know, I, I'd heard about this stuff, this Greenwich Village scene, um, um, and uh, it was really a thrill to be part of it. It's, um, it's well documented that you played with Hendrix. Um, a few times the monkeys played with Hendrix and, yeah. and, and he was he and I played together jammed just a little yeah. on a couple of occasions um, it was um, Steve Stills played with him more than I did he reported that he had never swung so hard in his life as when he played with Jimmy and that was my experience too that there was you know a master in the house and you could rely on his mastery you know, you get a bunch of kids together and they're fighting and are we going to play the same tempo? And, you know, kids who aren't really strong in, 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 uh, in terms of their craft. And is the tempo right? Are you going to feel that the tempo is under command? Are you going to feel that the, that, the, that the thing moves along? With Jimmy, you felt you were a master. I'm sure you rise to the occasion, too. That's it. Like, you yeah, just have to. Exactly, yeah. Um, do you have, like, a singular favorite memory from, from that time? Or? Actually, I do. Yeah. Uh, I was working on my guitar work, um, learning vibrato. And I, you start, a guitar player starts mm, 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 calling a, like what I call a tug vibrato. But later on, you go to a push vibrato. Mm, 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 mm. And I was just getting it. And I was talking to Jimmy. Jimmy was on the road with us. And I was just, hey, I'm just beginning to get that push vibrato thing. Yeah, he said, you move it, you shake the weight of the guitar. And I went, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> Suddenly, everything was massive. I mean, ding, ding, you get these kids with their little mosquito vibratos, and it sounds like, it's a nervous vibrato, it's, there's no power to it, you know, but when you're shaking it's the cosmos, yeah. oh, you know, so, so I tell people, <laughs> well, I was talking to Jimmy the other day, and they go, gosh, you can say that. Right, I know, something you don't forget. Yeah, no, that was great. Um, and so I understand, too, that Stephen Stills is the one who sort of um, brought the monkeys to your door. Oh, or vice versa, brought me to the monkey's door. Yeah, right. uh, apparently he had met one of the producers uh, socially and uh, had been told that he'd be great, except that his hair and teeth weren't Up probably far. telegenic. And did he know anybody who looked like him? No matter how little talent they had, <laughs> the guy had. And S Steve instantly thought of me. And called me up. He had to call me up twice. The first time he called me up and said, this guy's doing this thing. I went, yeah, 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 yeah. And he called me back and said, no, no, you really got to do it. And I went, oh, okay. So I went up there and walked into the cattle call. I thought, well, Steve sent me. I got an in. And I walked in there and I walked right into the cattle call. The only person who wasn't there for the cattle call was Davey, who walked in, huh. <laughs> giving everybody the snarking, huh, I got you guys toasted. <laughs> Maybe he does. So they were selecting all four members at the same time. It was like well, a cat group casting. Davy was uh, Davy was pretty much a lock. Okay. He'd already been signed to Screen Gems, the uh, the, the company, uh, as a uh, as a young performer out of Broadway. Um, some people don't remember, but young Davy, as he was then, was the American original American Artful Dodger in Oliver, the the musical Oliver. Okay. And he was a very talented guy, and um, uh, a friend of his 
moved, went to the West Coast with him and became involved with the Monkees, and then he got signed to Screen Gems. So when the Monkees came up, Davey was pretty much a lock, and the other guys were auditioned. Gotcha. And uh, uh, Mickey was uh, an old hand, you know, having, been, having had a lead in a, uh, in a TV series before that thing called Circus Boy. And there were Mike and I, the folkies, you know, wandering in off the street. Bringing but, in the talent. <laughs> well, I don't know. Mickey and Davey are mighty talented guys. Yeah. Uh, I, wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't denigrate their talent for the world. I don't count myself any more talented than anybody else in the group. Well, I guess you came from, like, the actual the scene, you know? I mean, you were part of, like, what was happening on yeah. the street at that time. And, you know, it wasn't, like, a commercialized... You weren't a commercialized No, I, entity, that's or... right. There was a lot of... We thought we were, you know, the avant-garde of the folky, the integrity loaded people we knew what which end was up um so your primary you learned playing instruments on piano and guitar was it an adjustment for you to start playing bass for the monkeys no i'd actually gotten my first professional accompanying gig as a bass player oh really yeah these there was a guy interestingly enough there was a guy named jim hendrix james hendrix not to be confused with jimmy uh james hendrix and vanessa uh needed a bass player and they i don't know what made them think i could play bass but um, there's a certain style of guitar playing where you use your th the, uh, Travis picking, where the, ba the thumb is counting off a bass, and the bottom four strings of a guitar are the same notes as the bass. So anybody who plays that particular kind of, of, uh, of, of guitar can play bass automatically. And I just walked into it, played like, like I'd never not played. So no, it wasn't any kind of an adjustment at all. The adjustment was that I'd rather have played guitar, but oh. that's a different story. Right. Did you have acting experience prior to that? Or did you just um, yeah, amateur and, and college. Okay. I was the player king in Hamlet. Oh, nice. Anon he finds him striking too short at Greeks. <laughs> his antique sword rebellious to his arm lies where it falls, repugnant to command. Nice. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Did you, um, did people ever make, like, find comparisons to Paul McCartney? Did you ever have to face any of that, you know? No, uh, not directly. You know, people, there was that thing about the Beatles versus the monkeys, and, um, and a lot of, uh, a lot, monkeys, of course, caught a lot of flack because they were commercially founded. Right. Now, by people who wound up not being in the group, now, you ask McCartney and Lennon what they were up to, and they said, well, we want to be like, you know, Carole King, we want to be like Elvis Presley. They had commercial intent themselves, mm -hmm. but um, they were writing their own songs, and they were scrapping and, you know, doing the Berlin thing. And um, it was pretty much agreed upon at that time that um, the Beatles were uh, an organic, self-generated group, and the Monkees were a top-down uh, authority created uh, phenomenon and that that made the monkeys less important or valuable. Now, mind you, I think the monkeys are less important and less valuable, but that's because... Different projects, yeah. Different, different projects. projects, but that's because the Beatles were the spearhead of an entire movement. The monkeys were very important to television. Uh, for my money, the Beatles did it all, and then we did the television part, mm -hmm. sort of after trailing after them. Hey, wait for us. We'll catch up in a minute. Um, and, um, and incidentally, I'd like to take this moment to say why the monkeys are important. Do. Which is that the TV series was the first TV series of its time, and for years afterwards, to feature four young adults with no senior adult figure. No dad, Monkey no authority. <laughs> Just, <laughs> you ought to be ashamed of yourself. It's a tagline. Uh, um, and... Um, which reflected the times, because at that time, we all knew that authority wasn't interested in the people. Uh, it happens, it's happened several times since. Um, the uh, authorities were interested in enriching the rich, and the, you know, and, and the rest of you all can go hang. So we were on our own, but the monkeys were on our own. We were on our own cheerfully, mm -hmm. without any resentment. It's just what we did, you would carry on. And uh, that expressed something that the kids knew was important. Yeah, and I don't think people necessarily apply that to, you know, your group. It's nice to hear you state that and, you know, to consider that being mm -hmm. very, you know, it's a truth well, to what the monkeys were. Any number of kids came up to, still come up to me and say, you know, that they had, uh, life was a living hell six days a week and 23 and a half hours the other day. And then there was the monkeys in that one half hour and life was okay for that one half hour. It's a wonderful thing to hear. Yeah, be and part I of think um, and the monkeys, uh, this spring, you guys are doing some reunion dates again. We're doing a reunion date. We'll be in the UK on the, we start on the 12th of May, 
and we'll be going through uh, just two and a half weeks. My own band, Shusui Blues, will be in Germany right in between, and then the Monkees resumes in uh, the United States uh, in, uh, in June, and uh, we'll be playing through about the middle of July, okay. and then maybe again in September, we'll see. So you, would you consider your primary project right now your um, blues, shoe? Sh Shoe suede blues. Shoe suede blues. <laughs> you learn how it's to a tongue say twister, yeah. You learn how to say it once. You'll never be able to say <laughs> the song again. Um, personally, yes, that's what I. You know, um, the uh, the monkeys is is a grand thing to have in your hip pocket, and I'm delighted to be doing this. And uh, when that's done, I'm going to be playing uh, the blues and the blues pop music that Shoe suede blues plays. Mm -hmm. I've just, you know, I I get my jollies in that band. Yeah. Um, you don't have to, you know, it's all your own, like, songs and stuff. Well, we, a lot of covers. We even do some monkey songs. Okay. Do about a half a dozen monkey songs. And, of course, some of them we do very differently. Take the last train to Clarksville. <laughs> <laughs> Bluesy. Very Slow bluesy. down. Yeah, oily. When um, the monkeys broke up um, originally, did you foresee reunions happening? Or was this sort of really unexpected for you? I never gave the matter one, uh, any thought either way, one way or the other. Yeah. If you'd said it was going to happen, oh, that's interesting. Never going to happen, oh, that's interesting. Right. You know, it's, um, uh, it certainly has been uh, very good to me. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, you know, and I'm proud to give it my best efforts. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great. Do you have anything else you sort of want to um, speak to for the rest of the year? Personal projects or? No, I mean, the Shoe Blues obviously. is the only personal project I have. Um, I did, um, somebody asked me if I had anything else to say, and I once said, uh, yeah, be a hero unto yourself, and uh, wound up giving a high school commencement speech on, on, that, on that theme. Yeah? Yeah, you know, it's, uh, people think, uh, well, you're just like everybody, you think you're different from anybody else, you know, that kind of thing, which is basically shut up and stay put and don't, you know, don't give me any trouble is what subtext of that. But in fact, everybody is different from everybody else. And, uh, and there's a thing in, the Incredibles. Twice in The Incredibles, somebody says, if everybody's different, then nobody's different. If everybody's special, then nobody's special. But it's a lie. It's the same kind of lie as, as uh, uh, nothing's too good for our son, so that's what we give him, nothing. Don't believe that, right. <laughs> and, um, and you have to be special in your own world. That's what people don't realize. If you're not special in your own world, you crush yourself. So. Well, that's a great mantra to live by. I so. think so. Thank you so much for stopping by and Thank for spending you. the time here with Thank us you. today. What really appreciate it. Appreciate it myself.